This is Sean Everhard with GoingLowBook.com. This is going to be a video lecture on how to decrease gaps in your bag by eliminating your 7-iron, taking it completely out of the bag, and changing your loss. It might sound crazy, but watch the full video and it'll make perfect sense. Hope you enjoy. So here's what I just created in a Word document. As you can see at the top, this is a typical low 80s, a low 90s shooter makeup of a set of clubs in, turn of the cl in terms of the club that they're carrying and the loft of that club. So I'm just going to kind of go down the list and kind of show you the way new technology is coming together and what most players are carrying in their bag. This obviously varies with every player, but just as a caddy for 15 years, an instructor and player, this is typically what most new club manufacturers are thinking of as an ideal set for this type of player, uh, especially somebody that's getting a professional fitting. So most players are going with a 10 and a half degree driver, three wood, you know, 15 degrees. Some of them are going to a higher launch at 16.5. Uh, the five wood, as you can see, has almost been completely eliminated. Uh, a lot of times it'll be a hybrid. It's usually 19 degrees. So you can see right there, you have a pretty steady increase by about four degrees from driver three wood to the first hybrid. The real problem here is when you start coming into hybrid number two, that they usually call a three hybrid. Now, a three iron, it, it from a typical set of clubs back in about 2000, and four, the degree was 21 degrees, which is what the three hybrid is. But the problem is, and also what I explain in my book, is that a hybrid, especially a traditional hybrid, the half moon shape, a 21 degree hybrid is going to go about 10 to 20 yards farther than a 21 degree three iron. So the common player thinks that, okay, I'm going to replace my three iron with my three hybrid but actually what's happening is you're just really increasing a huge gap right there. And the other problem is, as you can see, a five wood is 19 degrees or the first hybrid is 19 degrees. And then they're really only going up two degrees. Now, even scratch golfers, pros can tell you there ain't really much difference between a 19 and a 21 degree hybrid. In fact, a lot of players will hit the 21 degree hybrid farther than the 19 degree hybrid. So then many players will have a third hybrid, sometimes one of those driving iron hybrids, which I really like, which I will explain in my next screenshot that I'm going to cut to. But then again, you have another problem there because a lot of players won't hit a 24 degree any farther than a 21 degree okay and that third hybrid a lot of times is going to replace the five iron in the bag or I'm, I'm sorry the four iron in the bag and a typical four iron is that same loft at 24 degrees but then you have the problem again that a hybrid is going to go between 10 to 20 yards longer than the iron. And this is all a big segue into the next jump right here, which is what I have a real big problem with. When you go from that hybrid number three, 24 to the five iron. Now, a five iron back when, say, Ben Hogan was playing, or even back when Nicholas first started, was lofted at about 28 degrees. And over the years, the manufacturers have just kept decreasing that loft, essentially to make players think that they're hitting this new technology farther. Uh, my 5-iron, which I'll show you in the next screenshot, is lofted at 27 degrees, which is a typical player's club loft. But most clubs nowadays, any cavity back, even any forge forgiving iron is going to be lofted around 26 degrees. So the gap between that third hybrid and the five iron is huge. I mean, it, it can be up to a 30 yard gap. You get like a 10 handicapper that say might hit his 24 degree hybrid 190 yards. And then he goes to a five iron and he only hits his five iron 165. So you're going to have a 25 yard gap there for most players, which is just really not good at all. Um, I don't really have any problem with how they're increasing it six, seven, eight, nine. Uh, really, you get into the next problem with the wedges. Again, back when Nicholas was playing, a pitching wedge was 48 yards. 
Now the stock wedge, even in a lot of players set besides cut muscle blades, is going to be about 45 yards. Um, so that's a big problem right there because then what's happening is that if you don't eliminate one of the irons, which is the real main point of this lecture, which I'm going to get into, you're only going to be allowed three wedges. And with that 45 degree pitching wedge, a lot of players will just right bump, jump right up into a sand wedge at 56 degrees, as you can see with an 11 degree gap which is just really no good at all. You're going to have a huge gap in there. You're going to have a pitching wedge that you might hit, I don't know, 100 to 120 yards. And then you got your sand wedge that you might only hit between 70 and 90 yards. So again, now you got two gaps that are both almost 30 yards different. Now, if you go from a pitching wedge to a gap wedge uh, that's 50 to a lob wedge that's 58, that you can probably get away with, but I'm going to show you in the next screenshot that you're actually better eliminating one of the irons and adding a fourth wedge and you won't suffer any gaps at all in your club, that in the makeup of your bag. I know this sounds really weird. It's kind of a revolutionary idea that I had for my book. It'll make more sense when I cut out to the next screenshot. Here's part two of this lecture. This was a picture taken out of page 231 in my book called Going Low. It's the last chapter in the book entitled Turning 14 Clubs into 15. This is a table of the degrees and the set makeup of my bag. Before I start talking about the table, I'm just going to read you the paragraph above to just kind of help explain what I'm trying to get at in this lecture. So this paragraph reads, a typical set of irons will increase in three degree increments of a loft starting at a three or four iron up to a six iron. After the six iron, the loft increments by four degrees. Why? Why not increase the lofts consistently over the whole set of irons? To make matters more complicated, some people will replace a 21 degree iron with a 21 degree hybrid only to find out that the hybrid goes much farther than the three iron because it's more of a wood and probably has a graphite shaft in it. Okay, so I just wanted to read you that little paragraph. Now I'm going to do the same thing I just did in the previous screenshot. So as you can see here, I like to play a nine and a half degree driver. As I said before, the three wood doesn't really matter. Mine's a pretty big bump right there. It goes up to 16.25. That's just because I have a steep angle with the three wood and I carry the three wood a little bit farther than a 15 degree. Don't hit it quite as far, but I'd rather sacrifice the total distance for more carry. Now you can see I don't have a hybrid and I go up to that 19 degree hybrid, which was the same as in the first table I showed you. The reason I only go up about two and a half degrees here is because a three wood, you're going to hit longer than a hybrid because there's more metal behind it. So I carry my three wood about uh, 230 off the ground, maybe 235 off the tee. I carry this 19 degree hybrid about 210 to 215 off the ground, 220 to 225 off the tee. So there's a, there's a gap there, about a 15 yard gap but not too much. Next I go, you can see there it's entitled three iron driving iron hybrid steel shaft. Now here again, I'm only increasing two degree increments, which was the same as the other table, but the main difference is this is a driving iron hybrid, not a traditional half moon hybrid. And the reason for this is again, the same reason the hybrid goes shorter than the wood. So my 21 degree driving iron hybrid uh, will not go as long as a 21 degree traditional hybrid. So even though I'm only increasing the degrees, uh, the loft by two degrees, the gap isn't that much. I, I hit the three iron driving hybrid only about 10 to 15 degrees shorter than that 19 degree hybrid. Whereas I said in the previous screenshot, really a 21 degree hybrid and a 19 degree hybrid, if you're speaking in terms of traditional hybrids, will go about the same length. My driving iron hybrid, I carry about 190 and can roll it to 215. And as previously stated, 
My 19 degree normal hybrid, I carry between 205 and 215. So that's a pretty good increment, again, about 15 degrees. Next, I kick it up by three degrees to the four iron. Now, I know I just stated that the irons, you might as well increase by four degrees, not three. But again, the iron applies to the same thing I just talked about, why the driving iron goes shorter than the hybrid, why the hybrid goes shorter than the wood. The same applies now when you're making the jump from the iron to the driving iron hybrid. So I only increase it here by three degrees because the four iron is going to go, it carries about 10 yards shorter than that three iron hybrid and total distance is about a 15 yard distance with the roll. So you can see I'm almost right at 15 yards between everything with the exception of the driver and the three wood. Three wood to the first hybrids, about a 15 to 20 yard difference. Then again, the next one down, about 10 to 15 yards and you get to the four iron, 10 to 15 yards. Now they start going by about 10 yards, but the main difference is, is that as previously stated, if you can remember that paragraph, normally a club manufacturer, factuer, factuer I apologize for that, will increase the lower irons, four to six iron by only three degree increments, and then at the six iron through the nine iron by four degree increments. I think this really makes no sense I think it was just something that was always done and nobody has ever really thought about changing. And I really don't see the point because there's not that much of a difference between three and four degree increases. So my feeling is why not increase by four? And then what you'll see here is this allows me to eliminate my seven iron and add an additional wedge in the bag. Now I know this sounds crazy. There's this urban legend that the seven iron is the best club in the bag. I think a lot of that's from Tim Cup. Bryson DeChambeau would probably hate this lecture because I know he has all of his clubs to uh, the same length as the seven iron, but just keep listening and it makes sense. So you can see four iron all the way to the nine iron is four degree gaps and there is no seven iron in there. So I'm not sacrificing any gaps. I would say I only really need to hit a seven iron about once in every 20 yards. If I kind of need the seven iron, what I'll either do is choke up on the six or play the eight iron way in the back of my stands and it gives me that range. But pretty much my irons from a four to a nine, the gaps are between 10 to 15 yards very consistently. There's no gaps in there even without a seven iron. Now when you get into my wedges, you can see the reason why I did this. I now have four wedges in the bag instead of three. And now these increase by five degree increments just because I really like having a 60 degree wedge in there. So from the nine to the pitching wedge, 45 degrees. To the gap, another five degrees. To 50, to the sand wedge, 55. And to the lob wedge, 60. And all these wedges have different bounces, which allows me to do different shots around the greens. Um, I would say that I never play maybe one out of 20 rounds where I play where I don't hit all four of those wedges in a single round. I use them. I use them effectively. It's helped get my handicap down. It's helped me become a better player. I've used this system now for about four years. I've never heard of anybody doing it. I believe it's one of the highlights of my book. I believe this can help out any player in the world of all skill levels. There is just no need, in my opinion, for a seven iron set. They I apologize about the sudden cutoff there in the lecture. I felt the video was getting a little bit too long. Click the thumbs up button, subscribe to my channel, leave a comment, keep following me. There's gonna be much more instruction to come. And I hope the video made sense, everyone.